So we can search for a symbol we want to trade at the top of the platform here. We can search it up just by typing in. So in this case, want to place a trade on TSM or Taiwan, Taiwan Semiconductors. Woo! In the end of the day, the speech is hard, but uh, we can type it in at the top. Also, if you're looking for a symbol to trade, you can go through our watch lists here on the left side panel. I really like to look through our high options volume or our uh, liquid ETFs list here, just some um, high liquidity rating symbols when looking to place an options trade. But we can click on any symbol here in our watch list, and that's also going to populate our trade table in the middle. So as I'm clicking through, click on AMC here in the middle. I'm looking at my options table on AMC. Um, on the flip side, maybe we want to trade Costco too. It's not on our watch list. We could type in Costco. We're going to see all the results. Press enter or uh, click on the result. And now we have the options chain on Costco. So uh, Costco is, dang, it's already at 700 bucks. But uh, let's go back to TSM, about $100 underlying. It'll be nice for some examples. So now that we're looking at the options table on TSM, a couple of things that you're going to want to set up off the bat here. And now one of them is going to be in the top right here in the second smaller box. You see this funnel icon up here? Make sure, and of course my drawings are all over it, but in this funnel icon in the top right, you're going to want to make sure that this is selected and that you either select all expirations regular or non-regular. So if you are a weekly options expiration trader or you like to trade zero DT SBX options or something along those lines, that's where you're going to want to make sure that this filter is set to all expirations. Or you know, if you only like to trade the monthly expirations, you could go to regular. And now you see all these expirations are just based on each um, you know third Friday of that month. Or we could go to uh, non-regular expirations and that's showing us all the weekly expirations. Kind of makes sense here. We got all the uh, weeklies for Feb and uh, going into March a little bit there too. But uh, you can see here, Sorry, I thought something might be uh, might be off there, but uh, here we're going to see Ws. That's indicating that that is a weekly expiration. Just for example purposes, if we were to go to all expirations again and then uh, go to SPX here, you're going to see all these weekly expirations. We got that zero DT January thirtieth. It's already over for the day, but uh, that next zero DT would be January 31st. So just if you're looking for different expirations, make sure you got that funnel selected. Once we are looking at all the expirations that we want to see, we're going to then decide what to trade. So easiest off the bat, I think, instead of just, you know, I generally just ignore these dates. Um, if you're looking for a specific date, it, it can be useful, but generally we're looking at, Hey, how many days until expiration? You know, I like to have my option strategies open between 45 days or 60 days or something along those lines. That's where you can focus your eyes towards the uh, center of the screen here. And you're going to see all of the days until expiration for each strike. So Feb 2nd is in three days, Feb 9th is in 10 days. So you can go to the middle of the screen here and quickly go, Oh yeah, I want to trade the 45 days until expiration uh, on TSM right here. I can see, okay, 45 days is the March 15th monthly expiration. And I could then click on that drop down to see all the strikes. So once you're ready to check out and place some trades here, you would go ahead and drop down your panel here. Now we got all of our strikes. So this is just a little basic overview, but uh, in the middle, we got all of our strike prices currently listed on this expiration. You can scroll up and down if there's a lot of strikes, especially, you know, you imagine you're trading Costco or something like that. Um, you know, it, it, it might get uh, a little, little long in terms of how many strikes you're seeing. But so we have all the strikes in the middle here. And then on the left side, we're going to have our calls. And then on the right side, we have our puts. So all of this stuff here, those strike prices in the middle, bid and ask with the calls and puts, that's going to stay the same no matter what you do. Cannot edit these columns. Now we're going to have a couple more pieces of information we can adjust around here. And these are going to be the side columns here. This is what we could actually edit as we're looking to set up a trade. 
maybe you're looking to set up based on a, a certain, you know, Delta looking to do like one standard deviation, um, 16 Delta or something like that. You can quickly see your deltas here in this column or super nice. If on these headers, these names, you can actually left click on it and change this column to a different metric. So maybe you want to see the last price traded for these options. Maybe you want to see the, let me get my drawings out of the way, but we can put up open interest in volume two. Really like to do that, uh, especially, you know, as you know, maybe you're trading leaps or something that's maybe a little less liquid and you want to check out, you know, how many people actually have, you know, open positions on this strike right now. You can see that in the open interest column on either side here or on the flip side as well. We want to see, oh, you know, how many contracts were traded today? We can see here in volume as well. So, you know, as you're looking to decide on which strike you're placing to trade on or, you know, you're looking for the most liquid underlying or expiration to trade, super, super useful to set those up there. So that's a quick setup on getting our options table here. And I'm viewing all strikes. So as I scroll up and down, I got a lot of strikes. For some of you, it might look a little bit different. And that's simply because this little setting up here, this strikes all, that means that I'm seeing all the available strikes for this expiration. If I go up here and change our strikes drop down to, you know, something a little less, maybe I only want to see 10 strikes on this expiration. We can see 10. Now you see our space is a lot more cleaner up here. You know, if you're trading closer to the at the money, you might not need to see all strikes. And in a second here, when we look to place a calendar, this is going to come in very important. But uh, we'll go back to all strikes here. But two quick things that you're going to want to make sure you know how you can edit is viewing the different strikes and as well as viewing different expirations. So.